Welcome well back, back to the show. Good to have you coming today. Well, neither side of Parliament escaped the mudslinging this week with uh, gender equality and poor taste and made islands on, the, on a less than choice menu, as they would say in New Zealand. Yeah, so joining us now in studio is Federal Health Minister Tanya Plebisek and Shadow Communications Minister Malcolm Turnbull. Good morning to both of you. Good to have you here. Um, now, Tanya, if I can start with you, you've got school pickup this afternoon. Are you going to be campaigning outside the school pickup? I'm actually going to uh, another school this morning, um, Glebe Public School in My Electric, which is a fantastic school. Uh, it's getting great results uh, with a very diverse student group, and I'm Looking forward to talking to them at their um, out of school hours uh, care in the morning. They've got a thing there called Centipede where they look after the kids in the morning, afternoon, and holidays. And that's where I'm off to. You, are you going to be um, campaigning at the schools uh, like the other? Oh, I'm going to be talking to parents about how important it is to sign up for the $15 billion of extra funding that comes with the Gonski School Education. Because it looks like this reports. morning a lot of the MPs have pulled out. Oh, no, they're not pulled out. I mean, people have different timetables. You need to fit in these sorts of events when you can, when you've got other commitments. I and mean, later this morning I'm meeting with health ministers. Fortunately, I've got time to do this before I meet with health ministers, but you've got to prioritise. We're in schools all the time. I'm sure Malcolm visits his schools all the time too, and it's a great opportunity for us to talk to parents about our plans for the future, extra investments in schools right around Australia. Taking the politics into the schools, though... Uh, that... This isn't about politics. It's about school funding. It's about, it's about, it's about the, Gonski. The, the, the yeah. funding. But, but it's about... How's that uh, not about politics? Well, I think it's really important to tell parents that there's an opportunity to see extra investments in their school. The alternative is funding pulled out of schools. I mean, parents need to have that information well, that, to make that, a good that, decision. That, that's outrageous. I mean, I've been listening to this very politely, as is my habit, of course, courtesy in the morning, early in the morning, uh, despite the blue tie, you know. <laughs> but we'll get the, to that. We'll get to that, yes, you'll get to that. But look, the, the reality is, though, that the, there has been a money shuffle Tanya, and you know but that's that. not true. You guys Malcolm. have taken money out of higher education. The, the most of the money you're putting into schools is way out in the future. You're putting a lot less money in than David Gonski recommended. So to call this the Gonski plan is really doing it, 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 it's a con. South Australia is going to sign. It looks like it's going to sign up today, though. I mean, well, it's, it, the horse has bolted for you, hasn't it now? No, I don't think it's bolted at all. I mean, it, I think the real issue in South Australia is they had their budget. What was it? A couple of weeks ago. And now they're going to embark on some additional expenditure that wasn't even canvassed in the budget. I think the people in South Australia will feel very let down. Well, well I think what, it's... What, what, what price the South Australian budget? What price the credibility of that Labor government? It, it's terrific to see that Premier O'Farrell and his Education Minister Adrian Piccoli here recognise the value of this. And they see it particularly for Bush schools. Adrian Piccoli is a Nationals mm. uh, um, Member of Parliament. And he's been a very strong advocate for this plan because he sees the extra resources, and not just extra money, $15 billion over $15 billion extra money. It's about changing the standards in our schools as well, investing more in teacher training and upgrading the but, skills. But of where our... is that extra money coming from, Tony? Well, we've, we've fully funded it. Uh, it's been um, provided for in our forward budgeting. I mean, in my own area, we've had to uh, make some savings to pay for um, things like dental and disability care in other parts of government. We've made savings to pay for the education reforms. Well, the, the only thing I'd say is this. I mean, we're all in favour of... We all want to have better schools, mm -hmm. right? And we'll be better, better outcomes, educational outcomes. Now, the reality is that we've spent a lot more money on schools over the last decade, and our educational performance has declined. So spending money is, in and of itself is just not, an, is, is not enough. What we need to do is ensure that we have better teachers in the sense of teachers continually are increasing their skills and they're being rewarded for that. Now, the big different philosophical difference between Tanya's side and my side is that Tanya wants to get the federal government more and more and more involved in running schools, yeah, which will right. just impose more bureaucracy. We want to give schools mm -hmm. more autonomy Keep so that principals uh, can make their own decisions about who are the best that, that is exactly the opposite of what we're talking about, Malcolm. You, I'm glad to well, see that you... Are saying the federal government's no, no, not I'm, going to be more involved in I, schools? I'm glad to see that you admit that we've spent a lot more money uh, under Labor on schools already. Well, I said over the last but decade, the, but it's been spending... But, but, but our educational performance the, has been going down. The education reforms that we're talking about do include principal autonomy. It means giving a budget to principals and saying, if you need extra reading recovery teachers, this extra money helps with that. If your school community needs uh, some other 
support, mm. uh, better education for your teachers, um, whatever it is that will make your school community better, that's how we invest we, we this money. Move, we have to move on. Um, mm. We know that Kevin Rudd is going to be out um, at schools this morning. I think he's going to no less than three. Um, is Labor polling at the moment as to who, who people think is the better PM between? No, do you, no, no polling I mean, there's, at all? There's all sorts of published polls that you read in the newspapers. But they're not doing any, any further polling than that? No, I don't There's some reports no. around that there's, the people have been getting calls, Julia or Kevin. Well, I, I, haven't, I haven't had those calls. Have you, been, have you had any calls? Maybe I'm at the bottom of everybody's have list to call. Have you had any call. calls from Bill Shorten? No. Had no. Any calls from the anyone calls gauging I your get, support? The only calls I get are from journalists. Are you confident that uh, Julia Gillard will lead Labor to the next election? Yes. Absolutely yes. confident? Yep. There's no canvassing whatsoever well, for Kevin Rudd? No one's calling me. But you've said before that that may be that you're out of the loop. <laughs> it might be that I'm the least popular person in the Labor Party. Thank you. <laughs> no, that may, I mean, you know, you just may not be in that particular loop because it does seem to evolve every day. But it's, it's, it's not done and dust. The, the guy is out constantly um, he, he, and sucking the energy out of whatever you know everyone every, else comes up with. Every single member of Parliament should be out talking to the community. Mm. And Kevin's got a very important role to play in talking about our achievements as a Labor government. But at the moment, he's the only one that's drawing the crowds and, and getting real support for that's Labor. That's not true. I, you know, I went to a, a community cabinet with the Prime Minister a few, a few weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think it was, in Western Sydney. She was mobbed. There were hundreds of people in that room who wanted their photo taken with her, who were thrilled to see her, gave a standing ovation. They're just people who... who um, you know, any all comers, sign, they sign up when they see the ad in the paper. Quick and they word turn on that, Malcolm. We've got to do something. Tanya's brought in some props for us this morning. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's my you school project. On that one? Well, I, look, I, 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 I think that uh, Kevin Rudd is uh, being unfairly criticised. He is out there all the time, but every MP is. Tanya's right about that. And the reason why it's controversial is because Labor is doing so badly in the polls and. Uh, Julia Gillard's personal ratings are so low. That's the only reason Rudd's presence is controversial. Who would you prefer to be up against, Kevin Rudd or Julia Gillard? Oh, look, that's a matter for the Labor Party. <laughs> I'll leave it Sounds to like you're sympathetic towards Kevin Rudd. That's very nice, isn't it, on this Friday morning? <laughs> hey, what's this about, um, Tanya? Well, I, I just brought this in to show yeah. you. Health ministers, uh, um, in fact, the food ministers are going to be discussing today a new um, ratings Labeling. for uh, food that make it much easier for people who are shopping, mostly parents, to um, choose healthier options for their kids so uh, you get a star rating system and it tells you about fat salt sugar and it has um, information about you know calcium or fiber or something is zero else to five the rating is that so right. fours are good yeah fours good yeah. and it'll go up in half star increments and the reason we're doing this is because people want to make healthy choices in mm. their diet but sometimes it's quite confusing what would the star rating be on the Labor Party at the moment? <laughs> Five star. <laughs> so, so you're very proud so. of the performance at the moment? You think you those polls I, are... I'm, I'm proud of what we've achieved in government. You know, we've created 960,000 jobs. We've got a plan for disability care, a plan for education. Mm. We've got a strong economy. You look around the world, we're doing great. I'm proud of what I we've achieved. I think this is a good idea, by the way. Yeah, thank you. I don't you. know about the five stars. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Malcolm, just before we finish, we actually brought in a blue tie for you today, but you've mm. already worn mm. your blue tie. So well, I normally wear blue ties. This really it? is kind of to well, the... No, well, that's very kind. And I, but I, I just, I was appalled by Julia Gillard's speech attacking men with blue ties. And I, I just have to say that I think it should be an article of faith for all sides of politics that uh, we should decide the colour of our ties and the manner in which we wear them. <laughs> here, here. Here, here. That's something you must support, Tanya. Uh, no, I do. And I, I, I need to explain the point of the blue tie joke it. was the makeover that Tony Abbott had in January oh. that stopped him wearing the red ties because they were too but aggro the and put him in the light blue. Oh, Peter Garrett so. and Kevin Rudd it, had on blue ties. There, there, so. is, there is no Labor Party policy against blue ties. All right, good. We've, we've, we've come some <laughs> way, haven't we, by the end of the well, I'm glad you've cleared that up at the end of the week. So the headline should be, Plibersek under incredible pressure, backed <laughs> yeah. down from the blue tie ban. I, I, well, I think it's, yeah. perfect. Yeah. it's fairly go. likely that the Telegraph will go. go that way, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> right, Great okay. to see you. Thank you for Thanks being with us. Much. Good stuff. All right, it's over to Ben.